welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air dates November 11th, 1956, and the title is Pretty Mama. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M. The modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Branch on fire or something? Oh, of course not. What do you mean? Well, I can't figure anything else that gets you up this early in the morning. <laughs> Twice a year, Matt. Today's one of the days. You going to breakfast? Yeah, you want to join me? Thank you, sir. Where do we go? Delmonico's? That's the only place open before 10 o'clock. Mm. Are the mornings always like this, Matt? What? Oh, so crisp and clear. Oh, yeah, most always. The best part of the day, as a matter of fact. It's peaceful. I guess that's the feeling. That's the only time of day Dodge is peaceful. Well, that little shaver's in a big hurry about something. That's Hank Marvel's kid, Beanie, they call him. Well, he stopped at the jail, man. Yeah, wait a minute, Kitty. Yeah. Hey, Beanie! What's the matter, Beanie? You gotta come out to the ranch, Marshal. Right away. It's my pop. He, he's been shot. Been shot? Well, how bad is he? He's dead. Barn, Doc. I'll show you. You coming there? Uh, no, Doc. Uh, Chester, you go on with Doc, huh? I want to talk to Miss Marvel first. All right, Chester. Thank you, ma'am. I, uh, I'm sure sorry to hear about this. Just a few hours ago, Hank was sitting there eating his breakfast. Now he's dead. Uh, where did it happen, Miss Marvel? Down by the creek. He was laying there on the ground, shot to death. And Beanie and me got him into the buckboard and brought him back. Do you have any idea how he was shot? No, Marshal, no idea at all. Hank didn't have no enemies. He got along with everybody. Uh-huh. When did it happen? Right after he left home? Well, half hour, maybe. Him and Beanie left together. I was going to make soap today, and I'll, I just got the kettle set up out there in the yard when Beanie come riding back half out of his wits. Well, was Beanie with him at the time? No. 
Hank left him at the pumpkin patch and went on alone. We raised some pumpkins along the slope below the edge of the bluff. That's Hank's favorite kind of pie pumpkin. He, he always says... Well, he, he, he liked it better than any other kind. Yes, and... Did uh, Beanie hear the shot? Yes, and, and he rode along the bluff to see if maybe Hank had shot a deer. And then he seen his father... Laying down there by the creek. Did he see anything else? Anybody around? No, it's... It's awful brushy down there in the bottoms. Uh-huh. You're, uh, kind of short on neighbors around here, aren't you? Well, there ain't any at all, Marshal. It's just the Badlands on to the west, and the Circle D spread comes up against us on the other side. Yeah. Circle D's got a line cabin around here, haven't they? Oh, it's, uh... About a mile and a half north. They got the same rider staying there, Jack Teague? Yes. You uh, folks see much of him? Well, he's stopped by a few times. Hmm. Miss Marvel, uh, there's been a little talk around Dodge about Teague and... Uh... And about me, too, I know. And it's a lie, Marshal. Well, I didn't mean anything, ma'am. It's just that they say that he's... Now, he's a chaser. Hank heard the same stories and the same lies. That's why he ordered Jack Teague off the place. No? When was that? Last night. yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an l and Live modern. Smoke modern. Smoke l and M. Enjoy full, exciting flavor through l and M's pure white miracle tip. l and M draws. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. That's why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. I guess that's it. The bullet caught him in the back, right on the shoulder blade. He never knew what hit him. Did you get the bullet, Doc? Yeah, yeah. Rifle of some kind, looks like. Yeah, small caliber, though. Nothing like a Sharps 50. No, more like one of those light Winchesters. That won't help you much. Plenty of both kinds around. Yeah, I know. Well, you and Chester riding back into Dodge now? Now I want to take a look at the place where it happened. The kid's going along and show us. Where'd you get to, Mitch Dillon? I'm in a house with his mother, I guess. She's pretty upset. But at least she's lucky to have the boy left. Be mighty hard for a woman to keep this place up by herself. Yeah, it sure would. It's an awful nice little ranch. I wished I had it. You wish it? Are you thinking about the ranch, Chester, or, or the widow? Oh, no, dog. No, no. That's all right. I can't see as I blame you. She's a mighty pretty woman. Well, sure she is. But and so doggone young looking. It's hard to think of her as having a kid like that, eight or nine years old. She sure is a pretty little thing. Don't you think so, man? Yeah, she's pretty all right, Doc. Maybe she's too pretty. Mr. 
Marshal. Laying right there on the trail. All right, Beanie. Let's take a look, Chester. Yeah, sure. I come riding along the bluff up there after I heard that old shot, and I got right there at the point where I see him laying here. Uh-huh. Uh, your mother was right. There's plenty of brush in here. Mm, there's cover enough for a tribe of Comanche. You think maybe it was Comanche? No. Oh, well, no, Beanie. I, I was just saying that. I sure ain't much to go on, Mr. Dillon. No, nothing. With all this brush for men to hide in without being seen. To hide in, yeah, but getting away after it'd be a different story. Mm-hmm. Anybody up there on the edge of that bluff ought to be able to see a man moving down here, whether he was a foot or horseback. Yeah, lots of open spaces he'd have to cross. Yeah. Uh, Beanie, you were up there on the edge of the bluff, huh? Well, yes, sir, I was. But I didn't see nobody, nobody at all, Marshal. Uh-huh. Were you there last night when your pa ordered Jack Teague off the place? Yes, sir. It was quite a ruckus, I imagine. It sure was. Pa was mad and he got Mama crying. And Mr. Teague was awful mad, too, when he left. I imagine a boy your age might be a little scared of a fellow like Teague, huh? Yes, sir. Mom was scared of him, too, Marshal. She told Pa he was a bad man to cross. Yeah. I want you to tell me something, Beanie. From up there on the bluff, who did you see riding away? I see Mr. Teague. I think that line cabin just round the next turn yonder, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I caught a glimpse of it from back up the trail away. Oh, God, all you'd think they'd clear out some of this cussed brush from along the trail. I bet they'd be some good hunting along these bottoms, though, when the deer starts drifting down from the north. Well, maybe we'll give it a try in the next couple of weeks or so. Yeah, I'll get my old Springfield out and clean it up some. Pull up, Chester. Huh? There's a the cabin. Mm, yeah. Let's go on foot from here. There's a horse tied there at the corner. Yeah. All saddled up. Bed roll tied on behind. Looks like maybe Tig's figuring on moving. Ah! Hit the ground. Uh, reckon we come to the right place. Yeah, it looks that way. of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an l and Only the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip can bring all of l and full, exciting flavor through to you. And that's the big reason why today... More people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. Remember, L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Ain't much protection. Just build out a shake side and. Yeah. Maybe we ought to show him that, Chester. Might convince him. (laughs) 
Hey, Tig! He don't act very convinced, does he? Don't be a fool, Tig. Those walls won't even slow down a bullet. Now come out with your hands up. All right, then. Oh, hold it, Marshal. Hold it. I give up. All right, come on out, then. That last bullet must have breathed on him. All right, hold it, Tig. That's far enough. I... I knowed I was in for it when June rode over and told me Hank was shot. June? Yeah, it was Marvel. That's why I was trying to get away. I knowed I wouldn't have a chance. Tig Hank's boy saw you. He saw me? He saw me, saw me what? Right away, right after his dad was shot. Well, that's a lie. I weren't even near them bottoms this morning. You got a rifle here? Sure. I got a Sharps 50, and it's been fired, too. I tried for a deer this morning. Hank Marvel wasn't killed with a sharp. You got a small bore here, a light Winchester, maybe? Of course not. That's a woman's gun, Marshal. Miss Marvel. Oh, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Oh, it was something I had to check on, ma'am. Well, won't you come in? No, no, no thanks. Uh, got a couple of questions, that's all. Have you talked to Mr. Teague? I arrested him. What? Chester took him into Dodge. Is Beanie here, Miss Marvel? Oh, no, he went out along the bluff where he stacked them pumpkins. Raccoons are always getting into them. They come out sometimes just before dark. Why do you want to see Beanie, Marshal? I just want to talk to him, and so. Well, if it's something I can tell you... There's one thing you can probably tell me. What kind of a rifle did your husband own? Well, the only one he ever used was the Sharps 50. Uh-huh. Is that the only one he owned? No. The, there's a light Winchester out in the barn, but... Marshal, if you've arrested Mr. Teague... Why are you asking all these questions? Do you know how to use a rifle, Miss Marvel? Of course I do. Hank taught me. If you get anybody living out here on the prairie, you ought to know how to shoot. Uh huh. All right, I won't take any more of your time now, Miss Marvel. Goodbye. <laughs> By golly, I got him. That was a good shot, Beanie. Marshal, I didn't hear you come up. Well, I kept quiet. I saw you trying to get a sight on that coon. Um, sit down, Beanie. I won't talk to you. Sure, Marshal. That darn old coon sure won't get no more of them pumpkins. No, I guess he won't. That, uh, your mother's Winchester? Well, yeah, Pop got it for her. But she said it's part mine, too. That's a fine-looking gun. It sure is, Marshal. It's... It was just a mighty fine gun, that's all. Did you find Mr. Teague? Yeah, I found him. Vinny, he said he wasn't down there in the bottoms this morning. But I seen him, Marshal, plain as anything. I was just talking to your mother. She's a mighty fine woman, Vinny. She ain't no woman. She's a girl. Oh? She's a lot younger than Pop was. She's pretty near 11 years younger. She and your Pop get along pretty well, did they? Well, he made her cry sometimes, like last night after Mr. Teague left. Again this morning, too. Now, what happened this morning? Same thing. He was drawing at her about Mr. Teague. She was going to make soap, and mostly I help her when she does. Them kettles is real heavy, but this morning he wouldn't let me. That's so? He made me come here to the pumpkin patch. Said a little work would be good for her. Help get her feet back on the ground. I don't like it, Marshal. When he makes Mama cry, I get all funny inside. I see. Vinny, I guess you'd uh, do just about anything for your mother, wouldn't you? Sure I would. Vinny Teague wasn't down there this morning. Well, 
sure he was. You didn't see him. You know that, and I know it. Now, why did you say you did? I hate him, Marshal. And you kept saying I must have seen somebody. So finally I said it was him. Why do you hate him? Because if it hadn't been for him, it wouldn't have happened. Pop wouldn't have made her cry if Mr. T had not come around. If Pop gone, he'd have kept coming back, and he'd have kept bothering her. So I said it was him I'd seen. Ma and me don't need nobody like him coming around. You really didn't see anybody this morning, did you? No, sir. You shot your father yourself, didn't you? Yes, sir. I I didn't go to do it, sir. It was just all of a sudden. Them pumpkins could have waited, Marshal. Them so kittens are so heavy. Yeah, I guess they are, Benny. How old are you? Eight. Pert near nine, sir. Pert near nine, huh? What do you figure will happen to me, Marshal? Benny, I wish I knew. moment, our star, William Conrad. America's Protestants, Catholics, and Jews are strengthening the bonds of brotherhood and friendship by helping the needy overseas. Through their houses of worship, these three faiths are sending voluntary relief to virtually every free country in the world. Hundreds of millions of pounds of goods, clothing, and medicine will go to victims of war, disaster, and famine in many parts of the world. More than 80% of American voluntary relief work for the hungry and needy overseas is conducted through the religious agencies of these three major faith groups. When you share with needy persons overseas through your house of worship, you are promoting the spirit of democracy that unites all peoples for peace and goodwill. You are keeping faith with the finest tradition and heritage of America. CBS Radio urges you to keep faith with those in need overseas by giving as much as you can through your faith. And now, William Conrad. You know, on the high plains, a man lived hard and worked hard, and the years slipped by in a hurry. Well, next week, a man returning to Dodge finds that everything has changed because he stayed away too long. And his plan for changing things back calls for the murder of his brother. And that was the West. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Butch Bernard, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.